Hello comic book guys and gals and welcome to Comic Mag Musings. I am your humble host, Bill Miller. Welcome to the fourth installment of our Top 100 Pre-Code War Comics. Pre-Code War Comics helped to fill the void when superhero titles fell out of fashion in the late 40s and early 50s. With the onset of the Korean War, many a youngster picked up a war comic to catch a glimpse of what a father brother or uncle might be experiencing in a country that they probably knew very little about. Most pre-Code War comics were anthologies and rarely followed the exploits of recurring characters. This began to change in the late 50s to the early 60s with the introduction of Sergeant Rock and the Haunted Tank, both first appearing in GI Combat. Now, a quick reminder of the criteria. The comics had to have been published prior to carrying the Comics Code Authority seal, and the title had to be primarily a war title. This means no superhero comics produced during World War II. Some of the eligible titles were adventure titles, but they switched to a war context during the Korean War. Lastly, these are not necessarily either the most popular or the most expensive war books. They are simply the best war comic book covers, in my opinion. It was incredibly challenging to rank numbers 40 through 21, but it was also a joy. I made a series of five videos with 20 entries in each one, so please join me for the next 20 covers as we count down the top 100 pre-code war comic book covers. All right, starting off our list at number 40, we have Warfront Issue number four, from Harvey, produced in March of 1952, with a spectacular Lee Elias cover. This is a great bayonet cover by one of the best, particularly when it comes to pre-code horror. At number 39, we have Combat, number one, from Atlas slash Marvel, this came out in June of 1952, and the incomparable Russ Heath did the cover art. Just an incredible, gorgeous black cover by Russ Heath. Great blasting action in the foreground with some paratroopers in the background. At number 38, we have Joe Yank, number 10, from Standard Comics. Produced in February of 1953, the cover art detail is done by Alex Toth. A great action and explosion cover. A lot going on here. All of it fantastic. Coming in hot at number 37, we have Battle, issue number 27, from Atlas Marvel, published in March of 1954. The cover art duties were performed by Joe Manili. We have yet another fine bazooka cover with this issue. At 36, we have Spy Cases number 14 from Atlas slash Marvel, published in December of 1952. The artist is Saul Brodsky. This cover features an up-close-and-personal shooting. At 35, it's Battle Cry, issue number 7, from Stanmore. On the shelves in May of 1953. Cover art by Herb Novak. I enjoy this image because there's so much happening on three different planes in this cover. At number 34, we have War Battles, issue number 8, from Harvey, published in October of 1952. Lee Elias with the cover art. What I like most about this image is that you can sense the fear 
in the soldier's eyes. On fire with number 33, we have Frontline Combat, issue number 4 from EC Comics. January of 1952, Harvey Kurtzman with the cover chores. This is one of the best bazooka covers out there for my money. At 32, we have Men in Action, number 7, from Atlas Slash Marvel, produced in October of 1952. Russ Heath with the cover art. I fall in love with these dark Russ Heath covers. Such beautiful colors and so much hidden action going on in the darkness. At 31, we have Battle Cry number one from Stanmore. Published in May of 1952, Irv Novak with the cover art. This has to be one of the top flamethrower covers ever produced. At 30, we have Foxhole number 2 from Mainline, hitting the shelves in December of 1954. Jack Kirby with the cover art. I'm most impressed by the incredible shadowing and the choice of colors for this cover. At 29, we have Battle Action, number four from Atlas slash Marvel, published in August of 1952. Cover art by Gene Colon. I'm a really big fan of these meeting at the corner of a building type covers or a wall or something like that where you have the friendly and the enemy who are unaware of one another but they're on a collision course soon to meet at the corner. 28 brings us battle number 18, also from Atlas slash Marvel, produced in March of 1953. Russ Heath with the cover art chores. Another in a long list of great Russ Heath covers. This one's a particularly good flamethrower cover. At 27, we have War Comics number 24. Again, Atlas slash Marvel is the publisher, bringing this to the stands in March of 1954. Yet again, we have Russ Heath as the cover artist. This is a beautiful, dark and moody Russ Heath cover, one of many that he had done. At 26, we have Warbirds, number three, from Fiction House, produced in December of 1952. Unfortunately, the artist is unknown. Yet this is one of the finest dogfighting covers I think I've ever seen. At 25, coming in hot, we have Battlefront, number 6, from Atlas slash Marvel, published in November of 1952. Al Hartley is the cover artist. This is definitely a gruesome bayoneting cover. At 24, we have Battle Action, number 3 also from Atlas slash Marvel, published in June of 1952. Russ Heath is the cover artist. This is another classic bayonet cover, this one with lovely dark colors. Just accentuate the image incredibly. At 23, we have Man Comics, issue number 22, from Atlas slash Marvel, on the stands in January of 1953. Bill Everett with the cover chores. 
This is a bayonet cover with some of the best cover colors I've ever seen. At 22, we have Battlefield, number two, from Atlas slash Marvel, produced in June of 1952. Russ Heath is the cover artist. And again, I'm a total sucker, a mark, if you will, for these meet at the end of the wall or building covers. And the last one for today's list is number 21, War Comics number 11, again from Atlas slash Marvel, published in August of 1952. It should be no surprise that Russ Heath is again the cover artist, and this is possibly the best flamethrower cover ever. And that will do it for entries 40 to 21 as we count down the top 100 pre-code war comics. I hope you enjoyed the video and I hope you got to see some books you either haven't seen before or haven't seen in quite some time. Please leave a comment and tell me your thoughts. Do I have some ranked too high or too low? Were there some that shouldn't have made the list at all? I'd love to hear your feedback and don't forget to join me for the last installment as we count down numbers 20 through 1.